Welcome back. Thank you very much for clicking on this video, this care collab video of the Dendrobium anosmum. Today I'm teaming up with Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents and Todd Tropicals. As you can see, I don't have much to show for, for my anosmum. And a little history of this orchid is that I got kind of a weak orchid at the time, no roots to speak of and it was the wrong time of year and it was out of season. Initially, I had it on a regular mount. As you can see, my regular mounts aren't organic. I strive for inorganic growing and I'm trying different methods in order to achieve that. So the little white frame that you see in the back there, that is sort of my support frame. And initially, I always used that with sphagnum moss and then I would take the moss off, keep the frame, and then re -moss. Early days of my channel, there was this thought of how can I get away from using sphagnum moss? And this mount in this configuration is called a Michael mount because Michael McCarthy gave me the inspiration to use scrubby pads. Any brand you would like, but scrubby pads from the kitchen as opposed to EpiWeb, which I never went for because it was always so expensive. And I thought that was genius and I went with it, I rolled with it. Let's get up a little bit closer and see what's going on. Clearly the orchid is still dormant, just losing the upper leaves. Sometimes I force them off a little bit, but not in this case, it's still a little bit too tough. But this is the cane that I grew in 2020. She is a recovering orchid, I believe, that I was rescuing her from the moment that she arrived in my collection. So I'm still convinced that this concept with the scrubby pad will work because the roots are digging through the membrane. As you can see here, the slivers of roots, they are inside the membrane of the scrubby pad. So this is going to work long term. Right now, what I'm doing is misting her every day. I'm wetting the surface of the scrubby pad every day, even though she is dormant, because I have a very, very dry climate. And despite the fact being January, I do make sure that I water her every day. You can see that there is no other supporting factor for water retention or humidity. I don't have any sphagnum moss on those exposed roots. It's very dependent on me to provide enough water for this orchid, even during the cooler months of the year, growing her this way. In the summer, I do plan to supplement more inorganic material, which is like a white fluffy hob filter, which is much more pliable and water retentive. And I can always just tie it around the top of the root ball there and as new roots grow. So this mount for me, is actually something that will keep the orchid there for many, many years. And I can always build more layers of either scrubby pad or white hob material onto this mount without really ever, in adverted commas, having to take the orchid off. If there is a need, I also can buffer up more of any kind of inorganic material around the back by just sewing a little bit more on with fishing line. And you can see that the roots are okay with growing through the material and up and around the outside of this kind of a mount. These mounts are in actual fact placemats that you would use for your dining room and I cut them to size. So this is my experiment of inorganic mounts and growing orchids on these kinds of hybrid mounts, depending on how much water they need, depending on the season. In the winter, I can be generous with the watering because the air will dry the material off. In the summer, I can add layers in order to assure adequate watering for when the orchid grows. That is basically my setup. And I live down here in Southern Spain. We get a very temperate climate. My lowest temperatures usually range about five degrees Celsius and my summers get very, very hot. She is acclimated now. That is not the issue. The issue now is for her to grow one sizable cane 
this season. That is what I'm looking for. A cane that is definitely longer than what we see here, because this is only a quarter of what this orchid can actually do. And the idea is to maintain these inorganic mounts and then provide enough water and fertilizer in order to achieve the correct length and size of the cane. That is the test for 2021. Seeing as I have only structured these mounts in the early spring days of 2020, I don't have a full year's experience with them, but I do know from what I can see at this point in time, there is no problem with the roots adhering to any of this material. In the summer, she gets a lot of fertilizer. Every day, sometimes three times a day, depending on how hot and dry the winds are. I go at this orchid, if I were to grow it in a pot, for example, I would have it in a very, very water retentive media and make sure that then in the winter that media dries out. Seeing as she's on a mount, I do have to spray abundantly and keep her wet almost all the time as best as I can because the beauty of these mounts is they are safe in the winter. There is no danger of rotting. They're so much better to control with the watering. It is impossible to overwater on these mounts. I, I find that extremely important given the fact that there are very cold nights and if I spray her during the day, she will dry out in the winter. And in the summer, I am a heavy waterer. I can really, really go to town on the watering, not endangering or fearing for any failing of new growths. When I say I fertilize, it is at 300 parts per million. And as these mounts are inorganic, I am able to monitor and control the pH of the fertilized nutrient solution that I apply. I always range between 5.8 and 6.3 in my water. And that pretty much balances out the pH and the absorption of the different nutrients. Sometimes I apply seaweed, but only when I see that she's coming into active growth because I do not want to put in any hormones at this point in time when she's dormant. Right now, all this orchid is getting is just plain RO water once, maybe twice a day. For example, today, I misted her in the morning and it is now noon and she's already dry. And because it's a warmish winter day, I'm going to mist her again. She faces directly south, not on this wall, but behind the trellis. So the angle of the sun during this time of year hits her directly for about six hours, at least six hours. But in summer, she is in full shade very bright light, and let me qualify that for Spain, very bright light, but in shade. So depending on the hemisphere where you grow this orchid, my shade might be much, much brighter than your shade. So that needs to be taken into consideration as well. But if I put her into the sun here in Southern Spain, I would burn her, and uh, that's not the point of the exercise. So my shade might be brighter then your shade is wherever you grow this orchid. But the angle of the sun and the orientation of where she lives all year round does the work for me. I don't hardly ever move her from the rack that she lives right there behind and you can see that there's some sun against the window there. And pretty much it is an easy orchid to grow. The question is now for the coming season, how will she respond and how well can I grow a cane based on the material that I'm using on this mount, will it be sufficient to get a full length mature cane? If I get half a length, anything a little bit like half more long than the one I already have, if I can increase that length by another half, I consider that a good result. Again, this orchid was struggling from Jump Street and I believe it is set back so 2021 will be the year to see how well she does. So I think this is a great time to do this care collab, especially with regards to my anosmum, because we can follow her along and see how she progresses the coming year. And I really want to say thank you to Todd's Tropicals and Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents 
for joining me on this care collab. The links of the videos will be in the description below. If you have any further questions regarding this orchid or regarding the mounts, I have a playlist of the evolution of inorganic mounts on my channels. Feel free to go there and have a look-see or ask in the comments below. And then there's another thing I would like to add. If you have this orchid and you do videos and you want to join in on the future updates, please, please feel free to contact any of the three of us and say you would like to be in on the updates and we will send you the guidelines, which are pretty straightforward. But for search purposes, we will send you the guidelines and then on the next update, you are very, very welcome to join. The more that come on board with these kinds of care collab videos, the better in my opinion. I hope I've covered everything. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video very, very much. I appreciate your presence here. Have a wonderful day and stay safe. Take care. Bye.